Hello, everybody, and welcome to a new episode of our Pennywise podcast. I'm your host, Terry Barr, and this is brought to you by Lee Enterprises. So are you making your holiday gift list? And maybe you're checking it twice, too. Well, are you also prepared to try to pay for all the presents this year? Mm hmm. Well, we are lucky today. Christy Mathern, personal finance writer and editor for Wallet Hub, is joining us today. And she's got some great ideas to uh, maybe keep some money in your pocket, but still be able to get some gifts for the holidays. Hi, Christy. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me, Terry. Yeah, and welcome, Wallet Hub. This is one of the first episodes we are duly doing, and we are just really thrilled to be partnering with you. Awesome. We're happy to be here. Great. Okay. So we're going to dive right into this since the holidays are upon us. People are starting to shop. But what would you say, Christy? It's a tough year, too, money wise, for a lot of people. Is it okay to be thrifty when you're thinking about holiday gifts? Yeah. Yeah. It's totally okay to be thrifty. And it's really understandable this year, especially this year is going to be harder on a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, due to inflation, prices are up, everything from eggs to used cars. <laughs> so when you're buying gifts, it's it's really it's really fine. Okay. Well, these tips are pretty incredible, and I can't wait to walk through these with you. Five tips that you are going to share to help all of us maybe get through this gift giving season. Let's start with number one: make a budget. Yeah. So this is you know, there's a reason it's number one. Uh, it's the most important thing you can do when you have to spend a bunch of money on something. So this year is going to be a harder on a lot of people, of course, but no, no gift is worth going into unmanageable debt. You really don't want to be there. So the first thing you're going to want to do is make a budget, which is very simple. If you've never done it before, you just make a list of all the things you have to buy. And in this case, since it's the holidays, you're going to make a list of people you want to buy for. And then you fill it in with maybe a gift idea or a number that you can spend. And then you uh, check your bank account, make sure you know what you can spend. Yeah. It won't put you underwater. Um, and so you have that magic number and you get your spreadsheet together and make it happen. But I can tell you to budget all day, but it it really helps to be disciplined. You have to actually stick to the budget, you know. If yeah. you go over budget on one person, try and make it up somewhere else, you know, things happen. You don't always get to stick all the way to it all the time. Right. So just keep close to it and you'll worry a little less over the holidays. It seems like um, almost a fun way to make your list too, to be thinking yeah. ahead about the gifts and the costs and what you're willing to spend. And, you know, we talk all the time about budgeting throughout the year, but how many people do you think actually don't budget for the holidays? And it sounds like it's a perfect idea. Yeah. I mean, if I, I hope people are budgeting, like if it can, it can really keep you out of this anxiety situation when you're hanging out with your family and friends, that's the last thing you want to be thinking about is what's in your, in your bank account, you know? Right. It really does help. And I can't emphasize that enough. Okay. And, and the way you laid it out sounds like that would make it very easy to keep track of everything and just keep going back and checking it. It mm -hmm. sounds like, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, this one seems to go along with budgeting, finding some deals. That's number two. So what do you do? What do you suggest to find the best deals? Yeah. Well, once you know kind of what you are looking for, you know, after you've made your list, um, you, can find what you're looking for. You know about all these big sales events. We all know about Black Friday and Cyber Week and they have Small Business Saturday. These are all really great sales despite inflation. Um, you can save a ton of money if you know what you're looking for and you price shop and compare. Um, I think the average Black Friday discount is is roughly 37%. And on oh, some wow. items, it's, you can get up to 70% off on something. So those are definitely worth checking out if if you're ahead, you know, if you are planning and you you have your stuff together. Um, and if you're not sure where to look for these deals, a lot of websites aggregate Black Friday ads and, and big sale ads. So check that out on the internet. It's pretty easy to find. Okay. 
Um, and outside of that, you can also do your own price comparisons. You can use price drop alerts. I, Amazon has one of these. Google has one of these. Ah. Um, so if you're looking at something specific, you can just set a little notification and it'll tell you when the price drops. Oh, that's so, so brilliant. <laughs> yeah. that, that means you don't have to maybe hustle with the crowds on a Black Friday, but you can still work on trying to get a deal. Right. And online shopping really makes this convenient, doesn't yeah. it? <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. So like the, you can also go to coupon code websites. There's, there's apps like Be Frugal and Honey that do the hard work for you. Like they will have all these coupon codes. And when you're checking out, you can just hit go and they'll fill in the coupon codes until they find one that works. Oh, I love that. So yeah, very, very easy. Okay. Oh, thank you for those. Okay. So your third tip, maximize your credit card rewards. This does not mean max out your credit card. <laughs> We're talking about your rewards, right? <laughs> yes. Yes. So this is referring to rewards credit cards. Definitely not maxing anything out. We want to avoid that if possible. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> so there's a lot of value to be found on credit card in credit card rewards right now. Um, and it seems like people are getting more comfortable with that. So if you're planning on getting a new credit card, for the holiday season, yeah. picking the right card is going to save you a ton of money. You can get a card with an initial bonus that, you know, can give you 200 or some of them have even like $500 back for spending a certain amount within a set period of months after you get the card. Huh. And so if it lines up with your budget, that what you're already going to spend you're not going to get in over your head getting a bonus and you'll have 200 extra dollars. Ah. So it's it's pretty cool. Um, and you can also look for good credit card rewards rates on everything you buy. So if you have, uh, I recommend a two, like a 2% flat rate cash back card. So it gives you 2% back on everything that you buy. Rather than just food or just gas or something, go for it across yeah. the board. Yeah, yeah. Well, for holiday shopping, I feel like most people are going to shop at a, a lot of different places. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not just going to be one type of purchase. So if you can get it, it's basically like getting a 2% discount on Christmas or on That's holiday. Great. Anything that you do, it's going to get you 2% off. Yeah. Anything so. else with the credit cards? I, I really like what I've just found out with mine. Um, it includes like a shopping page where you can get discounts if you buy those items through your credit card. Yeah, that's a that's a great point. That's a good way to stack credit card rewards. If you know you're going to be shopping in a specific retailer, it's definitely worth logging into your, your bank website and seeing if they have something like that. Yeah. And if they have the retailer that you're about to shop at. Um, I've seen deals in, in that round about 10% back, you know, like you can get really great rewards rates that way. Yeah. And again, we're talking rewards, not, you know, spending all the money you have. So that's what this is all about. They're trying to save you money. Oh, my goodness. Uh, the, the drawback for sure is is the potential to overspend here. So uh, yeah. you keep that budget in mind that you made earlier. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. It always goes back to that. I yeah. really like your fourth idea. This is not something I've thought about in the past. But you suggest drafting some sort of payback plan. What does that mean exactly? So if you are putting together your budget and you realize you just have too many people to buy for, or you really want to give somebody something big and you uh, think you're going to need more than a one single credit card payment period to pay it back, yeah. you should consider getting a payback plan in place before you buy it. Um, and you can do this if like from the last tip, if you're planning on getting a new credit card anyway, yeah. you may want to check out some 0% APR deals. You can have anywhere from 12 to 18 months of zero interest. So you can pay back as, as you go yeah. over time. And that's not, it doesn't really have any strings attached. You're going to want to make sure you pay that back before mm -hmm. the interest period runs out. But 
it's it's a great way to finance your holiday purchases if you need to. That's great. Yeah. Is is a layaway plan? Is that even a thing anymore? You know, I've seen things like um, Klarna, like these checkout financing on on uh, online shopping websites. Okay. <laughs> layaway, but this is probably the closest thing to it. Um, you can get the store financing with whatever service they're using. Yeah. And some of those deals can be good, but be very careful with, with store credit card deals. Um, some of those can come with deferred interest, which is, uh, it's basically not a 0% APR rate. Got it. You don't pay interest during the period, but if you have any balance left over at the end, you will be on the hook for all of it. Okay. From the purchase date. So pays pays to read all the fine print, I guess, too. Sure does. <laughs> okay. And then the last one, you know, we've been talking about cash and if you're low on cash and oh, I how how would this feel? And how would you do this? Your fifth tip is make your gifts. Yeah. So if you're low on money, it's definitely worth considering using your creativity to give gifts. And I think, let's see, about 40% of Americans are skipping gift buying this year. Oh, wow. Okay. Constraints, and that's totally understandable, believable. Who could blame them? Yeah. That's yep. really expensive right now. Um, but for the right person, sentimental gifts, like handmade gifts, um, such as, you know, framing something that you both did together. Oh, in frame and and giving it to them as a memory that can be a better gift than anything you could spend a bunch of money on you um, know it's interesting you say that in particular about framing maybe a photo or a memento or something we don't print photos hardly ever anymore so what a great gift what a great remembrance right yeah. right and they said it can be better than than spending money so if you're low on cash don't don't worry about it. None of your family wants you to go into debt, and they might actually enjoy something really sweet like that. Oh, you can also give things like coupons for a night out on the town in the future. Especially, this works well if you're low on cash in the holiday season, and maybe you'll have some later. <laughs> or you can give a coupon for like a home cooked meal at a time of their choice. Oh, um, I love it. So spending time with people is also a great gift. Yeah, yeah. I, I have to agree. And getting back to that feels so good, doesn't it? <laughs> it sure does. It sure does. Oh, Christy, these have been terrific. Um, just, you know, for one thing, if people have, have a takeaway from all of the things we've discussed, what would you say is the bottom line to all of this? I would definitely say that the bottom line and the most important thing is sticking to your budget. <laughs> It's, it's, you know, you can make a budget all day, but you have to actually stick for it to it for it to help. Yeah. And if you do that, you can save a bunch of money, but also it will keep financial stress out of your holiday. Absolutely. That's, Sometimes the holidays can be a little stressful. You don't need to add money on top of it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It's about spending time with your loved ones and not fretting over your next credit card bill. So I love that. Oh, my goodness. Christy Mathern with Wallet Hub. Thank you for joining me and so happy again to have this new partnership with you. Well, thank you so much. It was great to be on. Oh, terrific tips. And everybody, thank you for listening to uh, this new episode. And I guess right now we're just going to say happy shopping and don't forget about your budget. <laughs> All right. We'll have another new episode of the Pennywise podcast coming your way next week. I'm Terry Barr and from Lee Enterprises. Thanks for listening. Cool.